Bob, where were you on September the 11th? 2001. I happened to be at home and I was just having uh, breakfast and a friend called and uh, a conductor friend of mine and said, um, do you have the television on? I said, no, for God's sake, what? I wouldn't do that. He said, well, turn it on. The USA is being attacked. Well, he's very operatic in his appro emotional approach. And I said, oh, come on, John, stop it. He said, turn it on. So I turned it on and I just went into another mode. What is going on? Did you and tap then, into that mode for the Requiem? I don't think so. I think the Requiem said it holds its own. I mean, it's it's uh, it's more about children. It's really about kids and what happens to children when they are uh, left without families and you know wars and devastation. And that's that's what was my focus on that because these kids that were singing, the ones at Trinity were born in the year 2000, so they were one year old, you know, September 11th, and so it doesn't mean anything to them, but they do understand about what they read, what they see about kids going without, you know, food, without, this, so that made sense, and that's what it's about, focusing on uh, the kids and hope for the future, so. When you were 10 years old, did you have musical experiences like that? Did you write this piece for yourself when you were 10? Did I write this piece for myself when I was 10? No, I probably would have been doing opera because I was an opera junkie probably by the age of seven. Do you have a favorite moment? No, I really don't. I guess, yeah, I guess I do. I have to admit that. I think it's probably the... In retrospect, it would be in Paradiso, and it was just one of those things. It was just happened, and I wrote it, and then we rehearsed it, and we're like, oh, it's the combination of the cellos, and, which is a win-win situation, four cellos, you can't lose, and the harp, and these kids singing, and they're just, it's just that, that innocent, lovely quality. was captured in that moment. It caught us all off guard. I was recording people. Uh, we were all in tears. about the beginning of the Requiem, the two strong chords. Is it too simplistic to say that's Tower 1 and it's Tower 2? No, it had nothing to do with that. The, the two chords, uh, I, I thought of here, all right, we're starting out the program. Here comes the chorus, and there sits the audience, and they're going to say, oh, aren't they sweet children? It's also, I hate that. The kids hate that. I said, let's not go under the chair. Let's really give it to them, wake them up. And that's why we have those two chords. And that, and that I thought would get us into the intro. So, and Robert said, do you want to do it in English or do you want to do it in Latin? I said, I prefer Latin because it's fun to write in Latin. You know? So now and then, I don't know if you've seen the score, but now and then you'll notice that one of the two voices might slip into English. So, But you don't hear it. I mean, it's one of those combo of sounds. So. So what made you think that Bob Moran was the right choice to write this piece? I had worked with Bob uh, for many years in Philadelphia, and I knew of his compositional style, which I would describe as noble simplicity. There's a way to score things for youth, in this case, for the Requiem, that is really simple, kind, and straightforward. And I think that's, what, that's why I chose Bob. Did you advise him not to have 
aerosol cans uh, and graphic scores and chance procedures and just write something nice and I simple. I did. I sort of gave him an outline of, of another piece, in fact, that he composed for a Forcelli harp and organ, and I loved that, uh, that those combinations, and I think that's what really worked in this particular piece. If you were to programming this piece on a concert, what other pieces might complement it nicely? I think a Gregorian chant. Um, I think that's always something that for, with Bob's music works very effectively. Um, I would I would also consider uh, improvisation as well because I think there's a sense uh, within this piece too that there could be uh, wonderful moments for improvisation. In preparing the children of the chorus, did you set out in, in a different way from you normally do, saying this is a really special piece about very intimate details of some of your friends' lives and your neighbors? I think that, that certainly came um, after the fact that we started learning it. Uh, I, I do believe, because in, in, in the work that I do as a, as a director of music in a cathedral or in a church, um, there are many moments that are very emotional. We, we play for weddings and funerals and the like, and even as choir members, as choristers, they would experience that. So, But uh, and it's not to say that it was not emotional. Certainly, I think for our recording in November, um, it was extremely emotional. And and uh, we, we've all very much felt this passion pouring out of the notes, pouring out of the harmonic movement, uh, and, and the sense of, of uh, the fact that we're really uh, living what this piece represents, which is, which is peace, reconciliation, and the fact that a child shall lead them, that the youth are expressing themselves.